When it comes to prayer and the sacred liturgy, nothing we do as Catholics is superfluous or perfunctory. In other words, everything we do as Catholics, every word and every gesture, has profound meaning and is of ancient origin. Sometimes we can be ignorant of that deeper meaning and ancient origin if we don't study our faith. Or sometimes that meaning and origin can be lost on us because we've got so used to performing the same gesture over and over again with our bodies or saying the same words over and over again with our lips. That's a big shame. Because every act and every word reminds us of a greater truth and points us towards the contemplation of an even greater mystery. To help us to remember something about who God is and what God is like. And there is no greater knowledge in the world than to know who God is and what God is like. Trinity Sunday is one of the hardest Sundays to preach on. And yet the mystery we celebrate today is what first and foremost defines us as Catholic Christians. That God is one, but God has also revealed himself as a trinity of persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Not three gods, but one God. One divine substance of three divine persons. Now the temptation, at least for me, is to want to have a go at explaining what the Trinity is. And something theologians, far, far, far more intelligent than I, have tried to do for centuries. And if I had a go, we'd probably be here at least to the rest of the year. And then I'd probably get bored about then. <laughs> but anyway... Someone once said, uh, someone said to me once, probably quoting someone else, try to explain the Trinity and you'll probably lose your mind. But deny the Trinity and you'll probably lose your soul. So rather than risk losing my mind at 7.30am on a Sunday morning, I thought I would draw our attention to one gesture that you and I as Catholics make all the time. But perhaps its profound meaning and its ancient origin and symbolism has been overlooked or perhaps we've forgotten it. The sign of the cross. As I said, we do it all the time. When you walk into a church, when you pass by a church as an act of reverence, when we were baptised, when we were confirmed, when we are absolved in confession, when we are anointed when we are sick, when we start the Mass, when we receive Holy Communion, when we are blessed at the end of Mass, whenever we start to pray, whenever we are afraid, whenever we want to give thanks to God, we make the sign of the cross. Put simply, we make the sign of the cross whenever we want to receive a special grace, a grace that comes from God. Even the vestment is meant to remind us of that trinity. It is an incredibly powerful prayer. Just this is a powerful prayer because it reminds us of an incredible mystery about God, who God is and the ineffable reality of what God is like. Truly, this gesture is of ancient origin. Take the words of one of the most prolific Christian writers of the second century, someone who lived, comparatively speaking, only decades after Christ. He wrote this. He said, we Christians wear out our foreheads with the sign of the cross. We literally wear it out and we do it so often. In all our travels and movements, in all our coming in and going out, in putting on our shoes, at the bath, at the table, in lighting our candles, in lying down, in sitting down, whatever employment occupies us, 
we mark our foreheads with the sign of the cross. And that's someone that lived over 18 centuries ago. Liturgically, Pope Innocent III in the 12th century explained that when we make the sign of the cross, we are reminding ourselves of the doctrine of the Trinity. But we also remind ourselves that Christ, who is God, descends from heaven to earth. Christ comes down from heaven to earth. And from the Jewish people, from the Jewish people on the left, he brought salvation to the Gentiles here on our right. You might know in the East, for Eastern Orthodox, they go the other way, from heaven to earth, and then they begin on the right and go to the left. They say, we pass from sin and sorrow to be with God at Christ, who, is, who now sits with the Father. Christ who sits with the Father. Take this one step further. You make the sign of the cross, and it reminds us that God is a trinity of persons, one divine substance. But we also make the sign of the cross because it reminds us what love looks like. We say it all the time as Catholics, God is love. Saying God is love is something of a Catholic, Catholic platitude. You know, we say it all the time. But what do we mean when we say God is love? Well, love is not first and foremost an emotion. It is not first and foremost a feeling. Love is first and foremost a communion of persons. In other words, for love to exist, there has to be the lover and the beloved. So if you say God is love, he has to be in relationship with himself. It would be inaccurate to say God is love if God is not a communion of persons. That's what is distinctive about Christianity. Islam, Judaism, they cannot say God is love. They can say God loves, but they cannot say God is love because to be love means you are in relationship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You can say God is all-powerful. You can say God is all-knowing. God is all-benevolent. But he cannot be love itself because love requires communion. On the cross, Jesus makes the love of the Father present for us all to see. And the power of that love is given to us through the Holy Spirit in every sacrament we experience. It's very powerful. Our faith, then, is a faith grounded upon and developed in the context of a real dynamic relationship. Whenever we receive Holy Communion, we are entering into that communion of love. It's a incredible mystery that when we place the Eucharist on our tongue, that is God himself, and we are taken up into the life of the Trinity. To think the feeble creature of all our mortality, our weakness, to think that when you place the Eucharist on your tongue, you are taken into that dynamic of true love. It's an incredible mystery. And our faith has to be grounded upon that relationship. A relationship between creature and creator, sinner and saviour the lover and the beloved. But this relationship has to be grounded in the truth of who God really is, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. And if we say that prayer often and with reverence, with reverence, then not only will we always remember who God is, but we will remember what God is like. God is love because he is a communion and that communion is made present in the love of the cross.